Won't you join me? I just used that clip from the trailer of Breakfast at Tiffany's that I'm going to be reviewing today. So yeah, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And, and as a treat for Valentine's Day this year, I'm going to do a movie re review on the greatest classic movie classic that had that had existed um 60 years ago which is Breakfast at Tiffany's starring Audrey Hepburn from 1961 so without further ado cue the intro please Hello guys, this is Jonathan, the Disney and Halloween fan here again, and today I'm going to do a movie review of Breakfast at Tiffany's. Came in the year of 1961. It's basically what the plot's about. Early one morning, a taxi pulls up in front of Tiffany and company, and from it emerges elegantly dressed Holly Golightly, who's played by Audrey Hepburn herself, carrying a paper bag containing her breakfast. After, after looking into the store's window displays, she strolls to her apartment and has to fend off her date from the night before. Once inside, Holly cannot find her keys, so she buzzes her landlord, Mr. Uni Ashi, to let her in. Later, she is awakened by the new neighbor, Paul Varjak who rings her doorbell to get into the building. The pair chat as she dresses to leave for her weekly visit to Sally T Tomato, a mobster inaccurated created at Sing Sing. Tomato's lawyer pays her $100 a week to deliver the weather report. As she is leaving, Holly is introduced to Paul's decorator, wealthy older woman, Emily Eustace Va Valenson, whom Paul nicknames 2E. That night, when Holly goes out onto the fire escape to elude an over-eager date, she peeks into Paul's apartment and sees 2E leaving money and kissing him goodbye. Holly visits Paul later and he is a writer who has not had anything published since a book of vid Vignettes five years before. Holly, in turn, she, ex she explains she is trying to save money to support her brother, Fred, after he completes his army service. The pair fall asleep but, uh, asleep but are awakened when Holly has a nightmare about her brother. And when Paul questions her about this, she chides him for prying. And she later buys Paul a typewriter ribbon to apologize and invites him to a wild party at her apartment. There, Paul meets her Hollywood agent whom, who describes Holly's transformation from a country girl into a Manhattan socialite. He's also introduced to Jose da Silva Peria, a wealthy Brazilian politician and rusty trawler the ninth richest man in America under 50. The next day, 2E enter Paul's apartment and she's worried that she is being followed 
and Paul tells her he will investigate and eventually confronts Doc Golightly. Holly is a strange husband. Doc explains that Holly's real name is Lula Maybonds. Maybonds. And that they were married when she was approaching 14. Now he wants to take her back to Willow, Texas. After Paul reunites Holly and Doc, she, in she informs Paul that the marriage was annulled at the Greyhound bus station. She tells Doc she will not return with him, and he leaves brokenhearted. After drinking at a club, Paul and Holly return to her apartment where she drunkenly tells him that she plans to marry Twala for his money. A few days later, he learns that one of his short stories will be published. And on the way to tell Holly, he sees a newspaper headline stating that Twala has married someone else. Holly and Paul agreed to spend the day together, taking turns doing things each has never done before. At Tiffany's, Paul has ring from Doc Glightly's box of Cracker Jack engraved as a present for Holly. After spending the night together, he awakens to find her gone. When Tui arrives, Paul ends their relationship and she calmly accepts having earlier concluded that he was in love with someone else. Holly now seems to marry Jose for his money, but after she receives a telegram notifying her of her brother's death in a jeep accident, she trashes her apartment months later. Paul is invited to dinner by Holly, who is leaving the next morning for Brazil to continue her relationship with Jose. However, Holly and Paul are arrested in connection with Sally Tomato's drug ring and Holly spends the night in jail. Then the next morning, Holly is released on bail and Paul is waiting for her in a cab, bringing her cat and a letter from Jose explaining that he must end their relationship due to her arrest. Holly insists that she will go to Brazil, any Brazil anyways, and she asks the cab to pull over and release the cat into the pouring rain. Paul then storms out of the cab, tossing the engraved ring into her lap and telling her to examine her life. And she goes through a decision-making moment, puts on the ring and runs after Paul, who has gone looking for the cat. And finally, Holly finds that she sheltering in an alley and with it tucked into her coat she and Paul embrace and that's basically what the entire plot for this movie is. Guys what do I think about this movie? Honestly this is a really great movie. This is definitely one of the best one of the best movies from 1961. Okay where do I start? Okay first off Holly Golightly is such a wonderful and a delightful character. I mean, I, I think Audrey Hepburn was perfect for her role in this movie. She was absolutely perfect for her role. And George Papard as Paul Varchuk, he was a good character too. I really, I really like his character too. I like both of these characters, and I think the acting was just phenomenal. Everyone did such a fantastic job. And this icon of Audrey Hepburn, that is, is, look at it. It's so, it's so nostalgic. Yeah. And... The way she sang Moon River, there was a scene where she sang Moon River. And let me tell you, she really sings beautifully. I mean, really, she does. She sings like an angel. Never have I seen a, a voice so lovely as this. And, yeah. I think Mickey Rooney, who is Mr. Uni Oshi, 
he was funny and he did a good job with his role. I think he he I think he was good for his role and he fits perfectly in. And the song Moon River had won for best original song. Yeah. Moon River Moon River had won for best original song and it won Grammy Awards. That's how that's how that's how wonderful and an iconic nostalgic classic this movie became. And Blake Edwards, I think he he did such a fan, fantastic job with this with the directing for this movie. I think he did he did such a great job. He was the one that gave us Days of Wine and Roses and the Pink Panther film series that stars Peter Sellers. And he made a gave us this, which is just as which is just as outstanding as the Pink Panther films. And it really lives up to its day. Everybody did such a fantastic job with their roles. The main character, Holly Golightly, is was such a delightful character. And she really sings like an angel. And she has the most beautiful and innocent voice. Who's played by Audrey Hepburn. And, and the cat, I find the cat to be pretty cute in this movie. There was, a, there was a cat in this movie too. So yeah. I really, I really love this movie. Breakfast at Tiffany's. It's such a great Archery Hepburn classic along with Woman Holiday, um, Funny Face, and other Archery Hepburn movies that, that I that I like. So if you haven't seen it, where have you been? You got to check this one out. This is such a lovely and great classic. So, but oh, and Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. So yeah. I am, since today is Valentine's Day, I am, that's the main reason why I'm doing this review, because it's Valentine's Day today. And I just want to say Happy Valentine's Day. So, besides all the positives, do I have anything negative to say about it? Honestly, one simple word is no. I don't. So for my final rating for Breakfast at Tiffany's, I'm gonna give this movie a... 7 out of 7. Outstanding film. And there you go. That was my review on Breakfast at Tiffany's from 1961. Thank you for watching this video, guys. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. This is Jonathan, the Disney and Halloween fan here, signing off, and I'll see you guys next time. This is me signing off, and peace out, y'all.